नमस्कार सो ग्लैड टू कनेक्ट विद यू ऑल एंड आई होप यू ऑल आर सेफ एंड हेल्दी विद इन योर ओन होम्स एंड ऑल्सो योर नियर एंड डियर वंस इट इज अ प्रिविलेज एज आई सेड टू ऑलवेज कनेक्ट विद यू एंड टूडे वी आर कनेक्टिंग फॉर अ स्पेशल पर्पज एंड इट इज द इनिशियटिव दैट वी हैड स्टार्टेड इट इज लिव यू टू नाइट एट थ्री सिक्सटी टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट एन इम्पॉर्टेंट हेल्थ इशू विच इज जनरली हिडन अंडर डिस्कस्ड Yes, many of you must have guessed, and I'm talking about mental health. Today, during the course of this session, we are going to understand the nitty-gritties of all the challenges that we are passing through. But having said so, as you all have seen, these are the challenging times, and there's a lot of uncertainties all around. We are not aware what is going to be the situation in coming days, how the situation is going to unfold. I'm reading all around. You must have been coming around with various reports. how this pandemic has affected all of us getting affected by covid is one part but what has emerged out of this whole scenario is something which has bothered each one of us we are not never familiar this is quite unseen the report says that all the impacts that are an outcome of covid-19 have affected many of us and i'm here talking about has affected mentally and as well as the mental health is concerned uh there have been the scenarios which are the change scenarios and which are not at all something that we were familiar with the reports all around have been talking about increasing death rates and the life that has changed over a period of time with regard to the new ways of living work from home pressures educational institutions suspended their offline classes and students being at home cancellation of examinations and the postponement of examination then we are talking about the job cuts we are talking about the salary cuts and we are talking about increasing the death rates and look at the limitations in the health services there are so many issues which have emerged and each one of these have an impact on our mental health and within the families if you look at the children and the elderly many of them must have been grappling with this unknowingly but it's important for us to be very very careful and vigilant about it and take care of it and we believe in india where the family structure is really really well knitted it is an important subject for us to talk about today in the session through our experts we are going to dig deep you know into the various aspects you know which are impacting our mental health in nutrilite we have always talked about four pillars of optimum health and we need to understand about those four pillars of optimum health how through them we can take care of our mental health i am not going to really really talk more about the symptoms i am not really going to talk about how we would be you know going forward with regard to taking care of that that our experts are going to talk about why uh, because they have the thorough understanding they are the experts and we are going to bring them in front of you this session is the third in the series of four the fourth one is going to take place on 20th which is more going to be about energy and strength equally important aspect the first two have already taken place in case you have not been able to take a look at them and have not been able to go through and not been able to attend just go to our youtube and facebook channel and you would be able to take the benefit of that also having said so let me tell you you know an important aspect we in our individual capacity what all can we do majority of fathers have not got impacted directly we are a population in crores and crores all around many of them many of us are still untouched by covid but directly indirectly we are aware of someone around us who is a part of the family part of relatives that got impacted what we have to do is stay positive all the time around them and be available next to them as a support now the support can be of various kinds i mean it is just being there motivating an individual staying in touch or providing the infrastructure support where the person probably would be you know looking for a space to be isolated and at the same time recommendations of various hospitals and the doctors if there are limitations i'll take a pause here and i am going to take it to the experts now to take it forward i would like to tell you that we have a trained and expert psychologist uh, from our max hospital in saket uh, richa mehta she is going to tell us in detail about this 
further. Stay attentive. This is an important subject. And let us all get together to understand it, recognize it, discuss about it, talk about it, and then tackle about it. And living up to the and the philosophy and the philosophy of Neutralite, helping people live better and healthier lives. Over to Richa Mehta. Thank you. everybody, I'm Richa Mehta and I'm a clinical psychologist in the Department of Psychiatry at Max Super Speciality Hospital, Saket. Today we will be talking about mental health during the pandemic. The devastation caused by the pandemic with millions of deaths, economic strife and unprecedented curbs on social interaction has already had a marked effect on people's mental health. Researchers worldwide are investigating the causes and impacts of this stress and some fear that this deterioration in mental health could linger on long after the pandemic has subsided. So in today's session, we will focus on three of the common mental health concerns that have been on the rise during the pandemic, which I have seen my patients undergoing. And I'm going to share with you how you can deal with them more effectively. So the first concern we're going to talk about today is depression. Many people experiencing the symptoms of depression might begin to wonder if there is something really wrong with them. One typical kind of fear that we usually see is I may be going crazy. Unfortunately, the reaction and comments from other people such as just get yourself together or everything will be fine, don't pay too much attention to it, think positively is not very helpful. It's important to understand that depression does not discriminate, which means depression can affect any person at any stage of their life. You may be an introvert or an extrovert, socially active or shy, youthful or elderly, male or female, wealthy or poor. This means that any person you know is fair game. Depression does not discriminate. Now coming to the use of the word depression, depression is a word we use in everyday language often to describe feelings including sadness, frustration, disappointments and sometimes lethargy also. However, in clinical practice, the term depression or major depression differs from these everyday downs or lows in three major ways. First, major depression is more intense than everyday sadness. Second, major depression lasts longer, which means almost about two weeks or more as compared to everyday sadness. And three, major depression significantly interferes with effective day-to-day -day functioning. Apart from that, it's important to understand that depression is a syndrome, which means it's a collection of behaviors, feelings, events that go to. Some of the common symptoms of depression include mood changes. Depression is considered to be a mood disorder. Individuals who are depressed describe low mood that has persisted longer than two weeks. This low mood could persist throughout the day, failing to lift even when pleasant things occur. In addition to sadness, another mood which is common in depression is anxiety, which we'll be discussing in some time. Apart from changes in mood, individuals who are undergoing depression may also experience changes in their thinking patterns. Individuals who are depressed think in certain ways and this thinking is an essential feature of their depression. It is as much a key symptom as the mood of physical symptoms. Those who are depressed tend to see themselves in a negative light. They tend to dwell on how bad they feel about themselves or how bad the world is or how hopeless their future seems to be. Things never seem to get better. People who are depressed often have strong feelings of guilt as they tend to blame themselves for things that are going wrong around them. This could lead to low self-esteem and confidence. Apart from this, some people experience physical symptoms of depression. 
These include changes in sleep patterns. Some people experience a difficulty in falling asleep or have interrupted sleep or others sleep more and have difficulty staying awake. Changes in appetite may also be present such as a decline in appetite which could lead to weight loss or the complete opposite where others tend to eat more than usual leading to weight gain. Last but not the least, people undergoing physical symptoms of depression may complain of fatigue, lethargy and low energy levels. This also reduces your motivation to carry out everyday activities. Individuals undergoing depression may stop doing the things they used to enjoy because they feel unmotivated or too lethargic to do so. Along with all of this, there could be deep-seated feelings of loneliness and isolation, yet at the same time, they may be unwilling or unable to reach out to others, even when they have the opportunity to do so, leaving them in a paradoxical state which tends to affect their mood even more. So now that you've understood how to identify some of the common signs and symptoms of depression, it's important to understand how we can cope with them more effectively. The first is sharing and talking to loved ones, connecting with them and opening up in a safe space. Often individuals undergoing depression tend to lack the energy to reach out to others or may feel that it's going to be of no use or people around me will not understand what I'm experiencing and going through which leads them to isolate themselves, worsening feelings of loneliness and thereby lowering mood. If you or anybody around you is experiencing some of these, it's important to encourage them to talk and share. The second important thing to do here is learning how to challenge unhelpful thinking styles or negative automatic thoughts in order to see things in a more balanced or realistic manner. According to the cognitive theory, the way we appraise or interpret an event or a situation determines the emotions and the physiological reactions that we experience and the behaviors that we may choose to engage in as a consequence. Therefore, it's important to challenge some of our own extreme thinking or our negative thoughts in order to reach a more balanced perspective. It's important to understand that you can influence your mood by understanding and identifying your thoughts and beliefs. When people are undergoing depression, they often think very negative thoughts about themselves, their lives and their future. This further worsens their mood. Cognitive therapy is one such particular therapy that focuses on discovering and challenging unhelpful assumptions and beliefs. Apart from that, people experiencing depression tend to feel lethargic and unmotivated. They often stay home and avoid going out or interacting with other people. As such, they may miss out on opportunities that help lift their mood. So identifying and changing aspects of behavior that perpetuate or worsen the depression is important. Some behavioral strategies that can help you do so are goal setting, planning or scheduling regular activities, and engaging in structured problem solving. Apart from this, it's important to engage in regular exercise. Exercise is seen as nature's natural antidepressant, which can help you boost your mood and reduce your levels of fatigue and low energy. This brings us to the second concern that we're going to be talking about today, which is anxiety. Anxiety is a prolonged, complex emotional state that occurs when we anticipate a future situation or event that may be personally distressing, unpredictable and uncontrollable for us. Anxiety only becomes problematic when it's excessive, unrealistic, intense, persistent, generalized and affects our day-to-day -day living. Now, anxiety can affect us in a variety of ways, physically manifesting as increased heart rate, trembling or shaking, dizziness, shortness or rapid breathing and nausea. Emotionally, we can experience anxiety by feeling on the edge, feeling nervous or feeling restless or impatient. Behaviorally, we can notice anxiety when we tend to escape or avoid certain situations or we tend to seek reassurance from our loved ones. Cognitively, you can see anxiety manifesting when there's a difficulty in maintaining attention, concentration and lapses in memory. So now that we're able to identify what is anxiety, let's understand how we can cope with it more effectively. The first thing to do is identify the triggers of your anxiety. 
Often not knowing what is triggering you could intensify your anxiety and may start to worry you that there is no solution available. Anxiety at times can be magnified by unhelpful thoughts. For example, thoughts such as I'm going to fail this exam even though you're well prepared or I will make a mistake even though you've prepared everything in advance. These thoughts often lack evidence but can still impact how you feel. By examining the evidence and challenging these thoughts, you can reduce your anxiety. Apart from these, there are a number of relaxation techniques that we can use in order to manage our anxiety effectively. When you're confronted with anxiety, your body tends to undergo several changes and enters a special state of flight or flight. The body prepares itself to either fight or run away from the perceived danger. During this fight or flight response, it's common to experience a blank mind. Using relaxation skills, we can end the fight or flight response way before the symptoms become too extreme. One of the most common techniques or one of the most easiest techniques that you can do anywhere, wherever you are is controlled deep breathing. It's natural to take long deep breaths when relaxed. However, during the fight or flight response, breathing becomes rapid and shallow. Deep breathing reverses that state and sends messages to the brain to begin calming the body down. Practicing this makes your body respond more efficiently to deep breathing in the future. So how can we do this? Breathe in slowly and count in your head. Make sure the inward breath lasts for at least 4 seconds. Pay attention to the feeling of the air filling in your lungs. Hold this breath for about 4 seconds again, keep count. You don't want to feel uncomfortable but it should last quite a bit longer than an ordinary breath. And last, breathe out very slowly again for about 4 seconds. Pretend like you're breathing through a straw to allow yourself to really calm down. Try using, you could also try using a real straw for this practice. Feel free to repeat this breathing process 10 or more times until you start to feel calm. Apart from controlled breathing, grounding techniques are another very effective tool to help relax and calm you down fast. There are many different types of grounding techniques but one which I find particularly helpful is grounding using your five senses. All you have to do for that is identify five things that you can see around you that are of a particular shape or color. Four things that you can touch, four different textures that you can touch, three unique sounds that you can hear around you in the present, two things that you can smell currently, and one thing that you can taste. Using these five senses helps ground you into the present. Now why is grounding effective? Usually when we're anxious, our mind tends to jump into the future. What if this happens? What if this goes wrong? Will I be able to manage? By practicing these grounding exercises, we can bring ourselves or anchor ourselves back into the present moment using all our five senses. Last but not the least, practicing mindful meditation, even if it's for 10 minutes a day, can really help you boost your mental health. Now, both anxiety and depression can impact sleep. This brings us to the third most common mental health condition experienced during the pandemic, which is sleeping difficulties. Researchers have found that there's a relationship between sleep problems and anxiety and depression, which is bi-directional. This means that sleep problems can cause anxiety and depression, and both of those can disturb your sleep as well. And just like your mood, sleep problems can also impact how you function emotionally, mentally, and physically. Even more so at this time, as sleep empowers an effective immune system. Millions of people around the world suffer from insomnia, which is an inability or a difficulty in falling asleep. This could be of three major types. There could be a difficulty in falling asleep, there could be frequent awakenings during the night, or there could be an early awakening, usually earlier than you'd want to wake up. This was present before the coronavirus also, but unfortunately, the pandemic creates a host of new challenges even for people who previously had no sleeping problems. Coronasomnia is a new term that refers to sleep problems related to the pandemic. With increased stress and anxiety, social distancing, quarantine, working from home and excessive screen time, all of these have had profound impacts on our sleep. And the best way to combat it 
is to stick to good sleep hygiene. Some of the important things to keep in mind are go to bed only when you're sleepy and not before that. If you cannot sleep, get up and leave the bed. It's important to use the bed only for sleeping, so avoid reading, eating, watching TV in bed. Avoid daytime napping as this can affect your sleep drive, reducing the need for sleep and leading to more fragmented sleep throughout the night. Apart from this, it's also important to create a one hour buffer period or winding down time in which you do not use any devices as devices emit blue rays or light which can further delay your sleep onset. Do not plan, problem solve or think in bed. If you find your mind drifting into thoughts or you find your mind racing, you can gently bring it back to the awareness of your breath and watch yourself breathe in and breathe out. Some other helpful practices to keep in mind would be to avoid heavy meals right before bedtime. Avoid checking the clock if you're waking up at night as this just causes unnecessary worry and tension and can further push your sleep. And last but not the least, limit and abstain from caffeine, alcohol and smoking. Now an important question that a lot of people ask me is, what is the correct time to seek professional mental health help? And the answer to that is quite simple. First, if you feel that your distress is significant and persistent, which means there are significant changes in your mood, disproportionate anger, social withdrawals, or there has been a traumatic experience that you have undergone, it's important to seek help. Second, if you feel that there are changes in your day-to-day -day functioning, which is your social functioning or your functioning at work, it's important to seek help. And last, if there are any suicidal or self-harm thoughts that are present, it's important to seek help immediately. Now that we've understood some of the common mental health conditions that have been on the rise during the pandemic, I'd like to end by telling you a couple of positive well-being behaviors that you can engage in which will help you boost your mental health. The first is eating a healthy, balanced diet. Eating a healthy balanced diet is especially important during the COVID-19 pandemic because what we eat and drink can affect our body's ability to prevent, fight and recover from infections. Although no dietary supplements or foods can cure or prevent the COVID-19 infections, healthy diets are important for supporting immune systems. Good nutrition can also reduce the likelihood of developing other health problems including obesity, heart diseases, diabetes, etc. So it's important for you to eat a variety of foods including fruits and vegetables. Cut back on salts, fats and sugar intakes. Keep yourself hydrated throughout the day. Drink enough water. I cannot stress this more or enough. Drink enough water. And last, consider adding a food supplement to your diet. Supplements ensure that you're getting a measurable amount of essential nutrients that make up for the poor nutritional content of many of the foods that we eat, especially during these times. Adding a food supplement can help you boost both your physical and your mental health. The second thing to keep in mind is regular exercise. Exercise improves mental health by reducing anxiety and depression and by improving self-esteem and cognitive functioning. A recent study done by the Harvard School of Public Health has found that just running for about 15 minutes a day or walking for about one hour every day can reduce your risk of major depression by 26%. In my clinical practice too, I have seen that patients who exercise regularly report a much better sense of well-being, feel more energetic throughout the day, sleep better at night and are overall more positive. Apart from this, getting a good night's sleep is very important. Your sleep, the sleep requirement of your body could depend on your age or your activity levels, but whatever you feel is sufficient for you, make sure you're getting that much. As a good night's sleep can help you boost your mental health. And last but not the least, it's very important to take time out for yourself. We often get involved in daily work, activities, things that we have to do, running late, doing this, doing that. Everything else seems to become important apart from us. So it's very important to take some time out for yourself every day to relax, to just focus on what you're thinking, what you're feeling 
and to engage in activities that give you genuine pleasure and that you find valuable. This will really help you improve your mental health. So this brings us to the end of our session today. I would like to conclude by reminding all of you that your mental health is as important as your physical health, so don't ignore it. If you or anybody else around you is experiencing any of the concerns or signs and symptoms that we have spoken about today, make sure you reach out for professional mental health help or try some of the tips and techniques that we have discussed today so that you can help not only yourself but your loved ones too. Wishing you all the best on your journey of mental health. Last 23 years, I'm building the business. When I joined the business, my daughter was one and a half year old. And now she is 24 and a half. She's a doctor. But you know, when the kids are small, we think that while they will grow up, maybe we will be free. But I can tell you one thing. That from diapers to the age of baby, every stage has, has its own attention for the moms. Being a mom is not that easy, you know. And my second key, my business, as it doesn't stop growing, it needs my attention all the time. Especially last year, when the lockdown started due to pandemic, we had already completed seven months of our double diamond qualification and five more months to go. And we didn't have any idea how to proceed. And no one was there to guide us. And it was a whole new experience for all. For a few days, we had no clue what to do, but then our positive mind started searching solution and then we overnight shifted from physical to the digital platform. Though meeting people got stopped, but meeting through digital platform started and which helped us to touch so many people in a single key. We could engage people in so many trainings and community building programs that life became full of fun and engagement instead of tension and worry. Just like any other human being, the pandemic affected me initially, but as an aware person, I gathered information which can help us to fight with it, overcome the situation 
as I started following all the protocols like using masks, sanitizing yourself, keeping the social distancing, etc. And I started training my team also. Already, though we were taking all the nutrition dense foods and Neutralite, but seriously, I started campaigning on that. And by designing immunity kits also, we had a lot of people. Also, we kept uh, ourselves, the whole team, very happy by engaging them with different creative activities. My daughter, who is not only a doctor, but also a COVID warrior herself, always tells that when you are happy, hormones are there in your body, it raises your immunity. That's why, frankly speaking, I generally keep myself happy by detaching myself to the data and to all the negative news provided in the social media. And as a result, I don't get that much affected with this. Yes, as a mother, I was definitely worried about COVID. Uh, my daughter, as she was not only a doctor, but she was directly working among the COVID patients as a COVID warrior. And especially during the second wave, the situation got really, really worse. I could feel that a happy girl like her also was going through such a trauma. As a mother, I was worried about her health. But then I used to keep myself saying that she's, a, she's taking neutral life since her childhood. And then she's ha having her uh, healthy lifestyle. She has already taken her all the doses of vaccines. And after all, it's her profession. So instead of being worried, I should be proud as a mother. And but it was really a panic moment when we came to know that she had a COVID attack too. First few days, she didn't tell us about that. But the day it was a bit worse, she couldn't hide. Rather, she confessed, we were not together. We couldn't even go there. It was such a horrible moment for us. But thanks to digital platform that we could do video calls whenever we wanted to do. And technology helped us to be together. And when we spoke for long, long hours, we spent time together, we started getting helped. We could come down. It gave us real peace of mind. Even when she was recovering, and as she's a good dancer, she used to dance for us to show that she's okay. Actually, it is all our minds programming, you know. When our loved ones are out of sight, we all started thinking that uh, maybe she's not okay. And we start worrying about him or her. So the solution is just get connected. So here at this point, why don't we meet my daughter Risha for a while and let us know her experience as a COVID warrior. So here is Dr. Risha Das. Hi everybody. I am Dr. Risha Das Gupta, daughter of Katie and Shashi Das Gupta. Right now I am working in Kanpur and as an intern and I've just completed my internship. So yeah, I've been dealing with a lot of COVID patients recently. I've worked in my first phase of COVID as well. And uh, right now I was working the second wave and I'm soon to come to Kolkata. So yes. Okay. So better tell me uh, what was your mental state when you feel that uh, you are also affected by COVID? Truly speaking, I was very relieved. I know this is weird, but I was really relieved because when I was working eight hours, in COVID, I was I had to be inside the ward for eight hours, and constantly behind my mind there was this um, tension that what if I am infected by COVID? What if I get infected and it's severe? But when I got infected by COVID, it was a sigh of relief because I was not that severely infected. Obviously, for various reasons, I was vaccinated. Complete vaccination was done. I always like since. Like uh, COVID started, I used to take my neutralized supplements and proteins and everything. I have a very active, fit lifestyle. So I was, I knew that I won't be affected that much, but it was a sigh of relief that, okay, it's not that big. I did not even tell my parents because I was like, why to worry them? They by chance one day caught me because on phone I was like coughing. Uh, so they're like, what's wrong with you? I'm like, no, I'm just, uh, I guess I have symptoms. They're like, Oh my god, you have symptoms? I'm like, yes, it's okay. I'm fine now. I don't have anything. It started a week back. You guys don't even know. So yes, it was a sigh of relief. And I could, after that day, I could really dedicate myself towards my patient full time. And I was happy about it. So I know that since last June, you are really working hard 
for the first phase phase also then the second phase came uh, and could you please share uh, your experience uh, as a covid warrior with us yeah sure my experience has been very versatile i would say because i worked in the first wave where the patients would come we just gave them drugs kept them in isolation and 7 days later they were discharged there was no personal linkage with them like we were not personally going and talking to them but in this wave of covid we had to personally go and talk to each and every patient we had to talk to them understand their mental status truly speaking this wave of covid had literally hit not the physical abilities not the not just the lungs the mental ability of the patients as well so what i did this time because i really want to focus on the mental health of the patient i started music therapy i had seen a lot of these reels and instagram stories where the, in a lot of hospitals they were like uh, making the patient listen to music so that's what i did i took a speaker i played soft calming music which really boosted up the patient's energy and they used to be very happy about it and also whenever it was my turn my duty i used to go on rounds sit with the patients talk to them how was their day what did they do in their day because it's very frustrating for those patients who are going through such a difficult time that they are not being able to talk to any anyone so like many people had their phones they used to talk to their family but then it's not for all right so i used to go sit down with them talk to them and then uh, the one very good thing that i did i guess is like in a ward there were like 5 10 patients two three patients were always good in a good condition so what i used to tell them in the morning when you get up and do your lung exercise breathing exercise make sure everybody does it so i gave them the responsibility that it's your responsibility to make sure that others also do the exercise so you would believe the scenario when we walk in inside the ward in the morning all the patients are sitting together and doing their lung exercises they are having their breakfast together they are having their lunch together they are working out together they are doing their spirometer like in certain cases like uh, we used to tell them to do spirometer exercises but i used to go and give them balloons because balloon is such a like vital part of our life in childhood you all blow balloons right so half of the patients are like no we don't want respirometer exercise give us balloons we will blow balloons and the wards used to be filled with balloons so yes there are so many things that i did and i'm so happy awesome awesome i'm happy for you too okay so beta what is your advice for the post covid recovery for the post covid recovery one advice is that truly speaking we do not know the extent of damage that your body has already gone through or your lung has gone through do 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 go to a pulmonologist and do get an advice from them who are really studying through this go to a doctor get a full check up done at least every 2 to 3 months because truly speaking we do not know the extent of the damage always after covid we are just treating covid right there are Uh, doctors who are who have done specialization on your lungs and everything so just go and talk to them get an advice get a check up done take proper medications health is very important proper nutrition proper morning exercises breathing exercises breathing yogas is very important but the most vital thing for any covid patient is talk talk your experience out i know it was traumatic i know it is not a very easy going journey go talk to anybody get a counseling done but yet yeah, have a healthy and chill, like happy life that's the important thing so risha thank you so much for your lovely sharing thank you thank you so much have a great day so as a mother as an entrepreneur as a wife as a daughter as a daughter in law i have to balance to so many responsibilities but when we accept all our responsibilities as a joy instead of a job life becomes tension but yes it, it is not always possible to be 100% stress free so how do i program myself to be stress free my mantra is control what you can control and accept what you cannot control Basically, stress is our mental, physical, emotional, and 
behavioral reaction to as a perceived demand or threat the moment we perceive a situation as threatful not controllable then we start getting stressed effect of stress can be long term it can be physical as well as it can be mental like depression anxiety cardiovascular diseases obesity eating disorder skin and hair problem gastric problems and so many things so now the question is how can we avoid stress so i i can tell you few tips first to avoid people or situations who or which causes stress to you if you cannot avoid them think what actually stress you ignore that or just get prepared for it learn to say no especially for the ladies i would like to tell you that we must know how to say no because sometimes just telling yes we make everything messy for ourselves plan your priority plan your activity express your feeling as my daughter just now told that sometimes we need a professional help also sometimes just tell to someone you love what is going through your mind this pandemic it was itself a stress this lockdown this from our bed in our surroundings automatically created so much pressure in our mind we can try our best to control it by adopting few healthier lifestyles like we can be more disciplined we can wake up early in the morning go to bed early on time and we can get a good 8 hours sleep regular exercise meditation yoga pranayam can cool us down watching movie together laugh a lot with the friends and the family we can uh, again pursue some uh, hobbies like gardening painting maybe music and this kind of thing as we do digital meetings similarly we can do same digital meetings with our friends and families too we can celebrate their birthday their anniversaries and we can do some unproductive chattings also i was uh, searching for new trends which may reduce stress uh, and found that along with a balanced meal we must take enough of antioxidants as well as anti inflammatory diet like green tea good fats like omega 3 calcium rich foods fiber is very important in our diet few herbs like siberian ginseng and our own traditional herbs like ashwagandha then brahmi these are very effective to keep us calm and cool and our age old chitavan prash just include these in your diet as for your requirements frankly speaking worry don't take away tomorrow's trouble it takes away today's stress sometimes some negative thoughts come to your, our mind maybe this is going to happen with us uh, this is going to happen with us so whenever this kind of negative thought comes to your mind you just ask yourself do you want that to happen to you if no then why we are thinking like that so we have to program our mind in that way it's all about programming your mind once muhammad ali said it isn't the mountains ahead to climb that where you out it's the people in your show so let's program our mind for the situation not let the situation program our mind thank you friends it's my immense pleasure to meet you all again with yet another interesting topic mental health this is the third session of eu neutralite at 360 on mental health i'm sure all of you are enjoying the sessions with exciting information about immunity lung health and today on mental health i take pleasure in introducing myself again i'm dr palani a research physician with mbbs and md having about 18 years of experience in research in brief 
I'm passionate about research and I'm involved in establishing scientific information and substantiation regarding the safety and efficacy of the products in this evidence-based era. I'm very glad to share some of my experience around mental health today. Friends, as all of us are aware that World Health Organization defines overall health as a state of complete physical, mental and social well-being and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. In the same way, consumers also have realized that mental wellness is just as much as an integral and essential part of well-being. People have become more cognizant of the things that they can impact the stress level and mood, resulting in consumers increasingly focusing on balanced uh, lifestyles and spending time on themselves. Did you know that although brain makes up about 2% of the body, but it consumes 20% of the energy for neuronal functioning? Brain and muscles are the most metabolically active organs even at rest. The concept of mental and social well-being is less well defined than that of physical well-being. But the unprecedented nature of the current situation and the challenges have accelerated the focus on overall well-being and the people are becoming more aware of the importance to stay physically as well as mentally healthy to cope up with the heightened levels of stress and anxiety. Hope you are all with me. Hence, there is a new paradigm shift towards holistic health among the consumers. While this trend was starting to gain importance in the recent days, the present situation has accelerated lifestyle decisions and habits that can support feeling relaxed, calm, confident, and self-assured. Some research shows that emotional distress creates susceptibility to physical illness by affecting immune response. To look at some common examples, like exam stress increases the susceptibility to viral infections, and stress in the workplace or life events creates susceptibility to cardiovascular diseases. The present situation has changed the lifestyle drastically over the last few months, which has further created high stress levels among the people. An increasing openness to talk about mental wellness have led to a shift in the approach from treatment to prevention. Hope you'll all agree with me. Consumers are also turning to nutrition to support stress management. As growing scientific evidence reinforces the importance of diet for mental well-being, in addition to the more recognized aspects of the physical health. I'm sure stress eating is another erratic habit we would have gone through at some point in our lifetime, right? So what is the link between brain and gut? The gut-brain axis is a two-way communication pathway between our body's gut and the brain and offers a better understanding of the relationship between what we eat and how we feel. I'm sure each one of you would have experienced like at some exciting times butterflies in the stomach, right? Did you know that other than the brain, gut is the next organ which has more receptors for feeling good or emotions? From this response, we know that what we consume inevitably affects our emotions and vice versa. As such, diets have become tools to elevate mood, help manage stress and mental health. Alongside exercise and relaxation techniques, nutrition will continue to play an important role in supporting health and well-being and managing feelings of stress. Majority of people struggle with sleep. In the present situation, there is increased fear over the family, isolation, the news in the media, etc. Did you know that good quality restful sleep is a form of overnight therapy? and it increases the chance of handling strong emotions effectively and also a refreshing next day, which is very important, right? Here are the three lifestyle changes that you must try. To wake up and go to the bed at the same time every day, achieving eight hours of sleep, taking a hard bath if possible, having no screen time, two hours before the bedtime, and eating dinner at least two hours before bedtime. This will help you. In the present times, 
it is very important to create a daily exercise routine at home isn't it clinical study shows that regular exercise produces chemicals such as dopamine and serotonin which helps to keep our body and mind relaxed and a feeling of well-being find out a simpler way to create exercise as a routine at home itself if possible at an open space or an open window to get some fresh air experts recommend between 30 to 40 minutes of exercise 3 to 4 times a week to work up for a sweat people with stress often struggle with exercise so start with small but a 10 minute walk and then add few minutes daily music can have a profound effect on both emotions and the body music can make you feel more alert and concentrate better music can quiet your mind and relax your muscles making you feel soothed while releasing stress of the day music is the effective for relaxation and stress management yoga can help you reduce stress because it promotes relaxation yoga can benefit three aspects of ourselves that are often affected by stress our body mind and breathing make yoga as an habit you do not have to wait to feel stressed to start with yoga you can start yoga better late than never one important aspect is laughter exercise it also relaxes and uh, it is useful in stress friends coming to the next component what do you mean by nutritious diet nutritious food consists of high quality nutrient dense foods containing vitamins minerals fiber and antioxidants that nourish the beneficial microbes in our gut that can support brain performance and reduce both inflammation and signs of stress diets high in processed foods and refined sugars may have short term mood boosting benefits because of their sensory characteristics but abuse or continuous use can uh, trigger a low grade chronic inflammation in the gut impacting long term state of mind fatigue and brain function along with sound sleep and physical exercise nutrition plays a very important role in mental well-being as a matter of fact for many people eating habits are at their worst during periods of high stress therefore it is very important to know which nutrients and healthy alternatives can replace the unhealthy options of chips ice creams cookies and candies when stressed believe me the following three macro and few micronutrients can make an impeccable difference to support you when you are in stress carbohydrates do you know that glucose is the ultimate source of energy for the brain for a steady supply of this feel good chemical it's best to eat complex carbs which take longer to digest next is protein amino acids are the building blocks of protein serves as precursors to many neurotransmitters like serotonin and dopamine moreover protein has high satiety value which helps to control your hunger pangs and stabilize blood sugar levels so make sure next time when you are hungry snack up on protein rich foods such as nuts seeds dairy based options beans salad or eggs our nutrilite all plant protein powder we have discussed in detail in the last session it can go very well with various food preparations like beverages uh, milk or uh, smoothies buttermilk or with chapatis and dal etc coming to the third one the fat the brain requires omega 3 fats for the synthesis of nerve cells in the early stages of life sources like fatty fish flax seeds and seeds walnut are rich in sources of parent omega 3 alpha linoleic acid you can include these good fats in the form of nuts and seeds into various salads smoothies and snacks there are array of micronutrients that ensure the mental well being the few important ones are vitamin c intake of fresh seasonal fruits like guava lemon grapefruit and oranges can make sure that your brain and mental health is protected from harmful toxins 
and metabolites generated during stress. The next micronutrients, vitamin B complex, food sources like whole grains, legumes, green leafy vegetables, seasonal fruits and vegetables, dairy and lean mat are rich in vitamin B complex. It is required for the development and maintenance of the nervous system. Pantothenic acid or antistress vitamin B5 has shown to stimulate coping mechanisms by supporting the adrenal gland and regulating cortisol secretions. Hope you are all with me. Magnesium is a important in regulating neurotransmitters and has an association with secretion and inhibition of stress hormones. Magnesium rich food like nuts, seeds, spinach, legumes can make sure that you meet your magnesium requirements. Yet another important micronutrient, selenium, with its strong antioxidant effect, is associated with protection against oxidative stress. Moreover, studies have shown that selenium deficiency can alter the adrenal gland functioning. To make sure that you have selenium in the diet, include sources like mushrooms, seafood, organ meat, legumes and whole grains. Next, coming to fruits and vegetables have long been champions of a healthy diet. I am sure all of you will agree with me. In the recent years, consumers have increasingly turned to these to reap the mental health benefits. Fruits and vegetables provide vitamins, minerals and fibers needed to support a healthy gut environment. Seafood is also widely known for its ability to improve the mood and manage stress. Fatty fish such as mackerel, herring and salmon are rich in omega-3 as found in our Neutralite Salmon Omega-3. Vitamin D which we have in, uh, in our Neutralite Calmed D plus and other nutrients have shown to have a beneficial brain health and help support mental health. Omega-3s in particular have shown promising results in treating mood disorders. Not to discount on the emotional stress, the brain is undergoing energy deprivation as most of the energy gets diverted to take care of some of the critical but basic vital activities and hence we face stress, fatigue, anxiety, sometimes brain fog and there is a problem in alertness and memory issues. Supporting your mental health could be possible by identifying and supplementing with micro and macronutrients and whatever required with natural, time-tested and traditional Ayurvedic herbs. Friends, thus it may be challenging in this fast-paced lifestyle to provide all the essential nutrients recommended per day through the diet. In addition, some amount of nutrients may be lost during the process of cooking, right? Hence, it is vital to address the nutrition gap in the daily diet with the right supplements to support your health. Further, we would like to add on some of the salient scientific rationale behind the use of the nutritional supplements. So friends, firstly, we will talk about the product Nutrilite Ginseng Cherry Plus. Siberian Ginseng Ariel Pira is one of the best studied adaptogens which has shown to improve the mental alertness, work output and work quality. This is mainly attributed to its specialized carbohydrate moieties, iridium glycoside content. Ginkgo biloba is considered as a living fossil and has existed for over 200 million. Did you know this? It is among the most sold medicinal plants in the world. Ginkgo biloba is a potent antioxidant by decreasing the free radical and enhancing the antioxidant status. Other ingredient in this product is citrus bioflavonoids, which are present mainly in the citrus fruits like grapefruit, lemon, lime, oranges and mandarin. These are known to exhibit neuroprotective property owing to its antioxidant and anti-inflammatory activity. Hesperidine is one of the widespread uh, flavonoids that is being used. The second product is Nutrilite Ashwagandha. Who has not heard of Ashwagandha? 
Ashwagandha is known as Indian ginseng is one of the most valued and well researched herbs in the Indian Ayurvedic system. It is a popular rasayana which is also a tonic known for its adaptogenic and anti-stress property which also enhances memory. As per Ayurveda, it helps to calm the central nervous system thereby easing the stress, revitalizing and boosting body's various physiological functions. Published clinical studies with Ashwagandha have demonstrated its anti-stress benefits as observed by reduction in the cortisol levels, which is a stress hormone, as well as improvement in the stress-induced immunosuppressive effects. It is also shown to have a favorable effect on the brain axis, which we have described earlier. Ashwagandha is also known to produce GABA-like activity, which may account for the herbs anti-anxiety effect. It decreases the neuronal activity and inhibits the nerve cells from overfiring, producing calming effect. The third product of interest today is Neutralite Brahmi. Brahmi is long been known for its therapeutic properties and is recommended for the management of alertness, mental conditions in Indian traditional medicines. Stress also has a bearing on cognition or memory. Hope you'll all agree with me. Research suggests that Bacopa Menori helps reduce stress and anxiety by elevating your mood and reducing the levels of cortisol, a hormone that is closely linked to the stress levels. Many of these herbs may display similar benefits. However, depending upon individual suitability and effectiveness, you can use it. Each individual may respond differently to these depending upon the suitability and the efficacy. Fourth product for today's discussion is Neutralite Tulsi. Tulsi or Osimum Sanctum is an aromatic shrub, the basil family, and I'm sure most of us have in our home, right? Did you know that in Ayurveda, it is known as the incomparable one or mother medicine of nature. It is also known as the queen of herbs and it is revered as elixir of life. Tulsi herb is known to support immunity but it is also a potent adaptogen which helps in the calming mind and has got a positive effect over memory and cognitive functions. Extract of Osimum Sanctum Tulsi is rich in phytonutrients and it has got Ursulic acid that is 2%. Nutrient Tulsi has extracts from organic Tulsi leaves, which is cultivated from non GMO seeds following a nine step process. The right species goes into the tablet, which is ensured by DNA fingerprinting with assurance of purity, safety, and potency. Neutralite Tulsi tablet has extracts from about 100 dried organic Tulsi leaves. Just like Tulsi leaves, Ayurveda, our traditional system of medicine, has given us a fountain of products. And one of the most widely used products is Chavan Prash by Neutralite. As you see, Chavan Prash is being mentioned in almost all the sessions, right? Which clearly highlights its versatile nature with multitude of benefits. It is known to balance all the three doshas, whether it is vata, pitta or kapha, as per Ayurvedic text. This can be interpreted as a rasayana or as an adaptogen or a rejuvenator, a comprehensive metabolic tonic which helps regulate every process in the body promoting health and overall well-being. In Ayurveda, Chamantrash is also known as Smriti Prada and a Medya Rasayana which nourishes and helps to preserve neuronal structures and our functions and helps in the memory, agility, helps support in mental alertness. It also helps relax the nervous system and therefore helps manage anxiety or stress. In fact, modern studies on Chavan Prash also corroborates this through the human clinical studies, where regular consumption of Chaman Prash has been shown to not only help manage cope with stress better, 
but also helps to improve the mental health in normal individuals. It has also been shown to improve the alertness, attention and concentration. We have discussed about the products in detail in the previous sessions also, right? I would like to reiterate that Chavan Prash by Neutralite is made with 32 Ayurvedic herbs out of which 16 are organic. Last but not the least, we will be discussing on Neutralite Daily. Neutralite Daily is a supplement for daily needs of vitamins and minerals in a healthy individual. For individuals who need to support their mental performance, Neutralite Daily contains iodine, iron, and vitamin B5 to support the same. Also, mental and physical fatigue is experienced when the energy needs of brain and muscle responses are not met, right? And this fatigue has a bearing on the functioning of the brain, resulting in cognitive and psychological decline. And Neutralite Daily helps to combat this a nutritional gap by supplementing the required vitamins and minerals. Friends, to summarize, the current challenging situation has impacted mental health of a person in a big way. It is paramount important to support the mental health and help people to cope up with the stress and help people to lead a normal life, isn't it? It becomes essential for us as pioneers in nutrition to help the people to create awareness not only on the high quality right supplements backed up by science but also holistic approach with exercise, yoga, good sleep to well-being, yes, mental well-being. Thank you friends for your patient listening and uh, I will be really happy to connect with you all and share my experience. Thank you again. Thank you everyone for being a part of our third session of Live Neutralite at 360 that was focused on supporting mental health where each of our experts spoke about their experiences and their knowledge around the topic during these challenging times.